peace and harmony, prosperity, and growth. Um, okay, so today we're going to be reading from chapter 12, excuse me, chapter 11. And um, let me just, okay. And we are still in Columbia, Columbia, South Carolina. Um, we got a room last night because it was, um, because we was tired. But um, we had a really good weekend. It was just so beautiful just being around our people. Um, and I'm going to be reading from How to Use Astral Power, A Key to a Miraculous New Life. And again, this is Chapter 11. Um, amazing Astral Power Can Locate Hidden Treasures and Lost Articles. Treasure hunting is really just coming into its own. Today, it is big business. Man now has the necessary equipment to go after the billions of dollars of hidden treasures. Psychics are telling the treasure hunters where to find it. Of course, I don't need to tell you that with this magic formula, you can locate many types of treasures. I'm certain that many of you recently read about the recovery of gold, silver, and jewelry, as well as historic artifacts that were a part of the $6 million treasure on a Spanish guillion sunk off the coast of Florida in 1622. Well, at that time, this discovery was reported in the newspaper. Over 1,500 items have been recovered. It's going to take a long time and a lot of hard work to bring in the rest of it. For we had just started. One of the workers was quoted as saying, We all dreamed of finding hidden treasures. I am certain that as a child, you dreamed of finding a shipwreck filled with millions of dollars of gold and silver coins and jewelry. We all read about the many ships that had gone down to a watery grave until recently they stayed down. I hope to tell you about hundreds of ships to be found at the bottom of the Great Lakes. But first, let me tell you about a type of buried treasure that you can find with little or no expense. The discovery of this treasure may not be as dramatic or historic, but it surely is profitable. A son finds $250,000 buried in milk cans. Mr. A was a very wealthy owner of a flour mill in Ohio. I remember driving by his mill many times as I returned to my home state of Michigan. Today, the freeway passes his well-known mill. In the olden days, the mill was known for the quality of its flour and its other products. Today, it is remembered as a place where the old man buried $250,000 in milk cartons and didn't tell anyone about it. Mr. A died leaving nearly a million dollars to his wife and children. One son made himself available to continue operating the mill as if it had been run for many years. No one seemed to know very much about Mr. A's financial affairs. The family was well taken care of, so... No one suspected that there was any more money to be found outside of the bank accounts, the stock bonds, and the real estate. However, thoughts about hidden money began to come into the mind of the son who was carrying on works of his father. The thoughts that were hidden of the money around the plant kept occurring in his head. He told himself over and over again that his father would never do such a foolish thing such as bury money. Mr. A was not known as a miser, but as a good businessman who was rather generous with his money. Finally, the son came to me. I'll call him Adam. He told me that he could not dismiss the idea of money hidden somewhere around the mill. He jokingly stated that perhaps he needed a psychiatrist and not someone to help him find it. Indeed, I reassured him by stating that we would use a psychiatrist as a last resort. I gave Adam two options. Either I would find the money for him or I would teach him my system so that he could find whatever was to be found himself. Of course, he chose the second option. As soon as he was able to raise his vibrations to the astral levels, he called in his father. If anyone could help him solve this problem, surely his father could. Sure enough, it was his father who was trying to reach him. His father told him that he had five milk cartons filled with $250,000 and five, and five tens and $20 bills, which were buried near the mill. His father gave him the location but could not give no reason as to why he had buried all this money. His father did tell him that he had intended 
to dig up the money since he really believed that he would have lived several more years. And the money was found exactly where Adam's father said that it was. It was removed to the bank and counted, of course. Uncle Sam would take his share. Would you have kept this find a secret? Yeah. How about y'all? Would y'all have put this in a bank? And would y'all have told everybody? Would you have just justified such actions in order to protect the reputation of your father? Of course. Would you have justified secretly keeping this money to keep the news out of the papers? Yeah. Adam chose to make the whole story public, letting others think that they wanted to think. He was sure that his stories that would circulate would not be true. The money was found, but the reason for it being buried in the first place was as remote as ever. I decided to find out why a man who gave no indication of having a personality trait that would result in doing such a thing would bury $250,000 in milk cartons. It, it could have been invested in a non-taxable bond or a trust fund for his children. Many questions came to mind. How did he keep others from knowing that he had all that money under the time that he buried it? It was all buried at the same time. Why did he forego the interest of, of uh, or profit that this money would have brought by taking it out of circulation? It just didn't make sense to them. As far as the family members were concerned, they were willing to close the book on the whole mysterious episode. We all have read about our or heard of cases where thousands of dollars are found after a person passes to spirit. I just read about a woman from Florida who died of malnutrition. She begged for food from the neighbors. After her death, the authorities found $800,000 in cash in safety deposit box. Many were stocks and bonds and $3,000 in a checking account. In most cases, we can discover a personality trait that accounts for the miserly actions. But Mr. Adams' actions just didn't make any sense as to any why, any way to them. Astral helpers find reason for Mr. Adams' actions. One of my astral helpers found the reason for Mr. Adams' actions in a former incarnation. Mr. A was an innkeeper in England, and he owned an inn in sort of a halfway station between two English towns. He had a very profitable business except for the fact that he was robbed too many times. While many handled their problems by hiding or burying their money, Mr. A never did. Robbers not only took all of his money, but they took all of his liquor as well. This happened so many times that Mr. A was a very poor man during the later days of his life. In retrospect, he came to the conclusion that he would have been a rich man if he had handled his money properly. Now, we see why Mr. A buried this $250,000. He was making sure that he would have enough for later years of his life if the banks failed, all of his stocks and bonds became worthless, or he still had plenty of money. Apparently, he was not fully conscious of the fact that the environmental conditions present during the two lives were different. He did provide proof that we are the product of all that has gone before, but in this case, the United States government was the big winner. Millions of dollars are buried, never to be recovered. Since our government was established over 200 years ago, millions of dollars have been hidden, buried, or, or burned since their government that they, take from, that they took from us since the thieving of the government from the indigenous people over 200 years ago. Many millions of dollars have been hidden, buried, or burned. The U.S. government is always the big winner. Um, America is going to start being the big winner. How many times have you read or heard about children playing in old houses or construction workers remodeling buildings who find valuable articles or large sums of money? There seldom is any record of how these treasures got there or why. Your chances of stumbling onto such treasures are rather remote. It would also be a waste of time to go aimlessly searching for hidden or buried treasures. You can, however, alert one of your astral helpers to be on the lookout for this type of treasure. Through their astral radar, they can tell you where to find such treasures. The same technique applies to lost articles. You can save time by simply asking one of your astral helpers where the lost articles are hidden. 
There is nothing dramatic about finding a bundle of old socks, of old bonds and stocks and banks, books and showing large sums of money still on deposit, drawing interest, letters from famous people or antiques that have been collector's items, or plain old dirty money in the form of bills, silver or gold coins. However, the amount of gold cash that you can recover is often amazing. Experts find buried treasures in outhouses. Several years ago, many business leaders were making public statements concerning the vital importance to Detroit of the proposed Renaissance Center along the Detroit Riverfront. This multi-million dollar project will be composed of stores, offices, hotels, apartments, convention centers, and even an auditorium. Since it would be one of the tallest complexes of the buildings in Michigan, it would be necessary to dig a foundation that's deep. You remember me calling your attention to the fact that construction workers often discover hidden treasures? The hidden treasures so far found at the Renaissance site had caused Mr. Weeks, director of the district of the Detroit Historical Museum, to state one of the riches is not the richest early 19th century archaeological digits in the country that had been discovered. It seemed that people 150 years ago did not have garbage disposals, trash pickups, or other modern ways of getting rid of unwanted stuff. What they did with those things was they threw them in the outhouses known as privies or necessities then. Among some of the items already on display are clay smoking pipes, earthen chamber pots, some 1830s British Stratfordshire ceramic bowls, 150-year-old duck eggs, dishes, utilities, and utensils, letters, account books, etc. I was just thinking about how that was so true because when we obtained that um, the three acres of land for $900, um, it had a lot of piles that were covered in grass and different things like that and we found like bleach bottles old coca-cola bottles and on ebay these bleach bottles were being sold for like fifty dollars because of the glass and the quality stuff like that so that's true and then a lot of the elders were like y'all could just take that stuff and bury it in the ground and i was like why would i do that for the next generation however that was a solution a lot of times because um you know we didn't we didn't waste money Mr. Bitch was um, Mr. Ebenezer Bitch's chamber pot was found in nearly perfect condition. Mr. Beach was a maker of hats. Some of his records indicate that he had financial troubles also. You may not agree, but the scientists involved in this project, financed by the Ford Motor Company, believe that the most important finds of all is what the 19th century people called night soil or fecal matter. Because of the high water level around Detroit, night soil is still very much as it was when it left the human body. However, the, sm the smell seems to be intensified. Of course, the hard hats thought that the scientists were nuts to be interested in this stinking stuff. This finkel matter is under observation in nitrogen tits in private laboratories. The scientists have been able to keep alive certain bacterial growths from this night soil. The dates back to the time it was discarded in the outhouse 150 years ago. From all this study, you may ask, what has all this to do with buried treasures? The scientists hope to gain insight into the health and eating habits of these people. Also, by testing and comparing the fecal matter of 150 years ago with that of today, the scientists hope to show how different modern bacteria are as a result of use of antibiotics. Now, this is deep because the Orientals are over there taking, uh, making doo-doo burgers and um, taking the protein from the, out of the sewers and creating meat. So, they're saying that this result could be medically significant. Okay, so you still don't think it's, it's in the hidden treasures? Would you settle for calling it a hidden history? Okay, okay, hidden history is true, but hidden treasure, it, it, if y'all were more, if people were more on the higher nature, then maybe, but mm -mm. three sisters create hidden treasure galore. 
Three sisters live in 17th century family home until they pass the spirit. They never married or had any serious love affairs. Their father was at one time a well-known industrialist, and his home was always a show place and probably will be for many years to come. Poising in the middle of a six acres of beautifully landscaped um, gardens, their lovely place was guarded by a picket fence. All heads turned to admire when passing the Wade home. Mr. Wade evidently wanted at least a boy. He gave up after the third girl was born. However, he raised his three daughters as if they were boys. He taught them gardening, painting, masonry, carpentry, decorating, mechanics, plumbing. And after the girls reached maturity, it was not an uncommon sight to see them mowing the lawn, weeding the garden, painting, or even fixing leaks in the roof. Which that's deep because um, most women are more... They have 28% genetic material, so XX. So I can see why they were capable. Um, they did all of the interior decorating, including wallpaper, refinishing furniture, remodeling the home, and other odd jobs such as unclogging seats. The three sisters were school teachers. One taught history, another mathematics, and the other English. After their parents died, they hired a housekeeper and a handyman. One often wondered what they hired help did except to take care of the place while the sisters were traveling since they did most of the work. Early in their adult life, the three sisters became interested in famous painting and antiques. As the years rolled by, they, this lovely home really did become a show place. The city's women's club had it on their list of homes that were open to the public a few times a year. They were always excellent attendants at the time of the open house. The three sisters then displayed Original paintings by Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Picasso, Raphael, and others. The French marble tables, amber glassware, hobnail lamps, and um, dishes, milk glasses, pewter, and dozens of other types of antiques made small talk for days to come for all who had the opportunity to visit their beautiful home. Most of the furniture and decorations had an interesting history as well. After the three sisters retired from teaching, they spent more time picking up rare antiques. The Wade home became extremely well known. Then things went into a reversal. The antiques and famous paintings gradually disappeared. It soon became very noticeable. People began asking if these items were being sold. Some offered to buy them. And the question was always answered with a polite smile. After a few years, the Wade home became just a nice home with tasteful furniture and few conversation pieces. The original paintings had been replaced by excellent copies, but in the same frame. Interested in the Wade home was greatly reduced. The general um, conclusion that the majority of the townspeople came to was that the three sisters were short of money and had to sell some of the treasures. Finally, the last of the three sisters passed the spirit and... The will was read. They had left the home to the city with the understanding that it would still be open to the public at least several times each year. The city was to be held responsible for the care and the upkeep of the home, as well as the security against theft and vandalism. As the members of the city council toured the Wade estate, their first reactions were that they had a white elephant on their hands. It was just a nice old house and nothing more. Mr. Strong one of the council members had made numerous trips through the house over the past 30 years. He noticed both the increase and decrease in the number of very valuable paintings and antiques. He asked himself many questions concerning the reason for this fact. He just could not believe that the three sisters became short of cash. For several weeks, Mr. Strong kept trying to find the answers. He carefully searched the house thinking that perhaps many valuables had been stored somewhere. The thought came to him that perhaps the three sisters could not take proper care of those things as they grew older. So they stored them away for safekeeping, but where? He searched and he searched and he searched and he found nothing. My magic formula revealed the secrets of the three sisters. Mr. Strong knew a patient of mine who had de developed considerable skills in the fields of ESB. And he asked my patients to go with him to the Wade home to see if he could pick up any clues as to what happened to several hundred thousand dollars worth of antiques and original paintings. Mr. C, who was my patient, found the answer. And what an answer he found. 
I had since contacted the three sisters in the astral world and asked them why they did it. They all laughed and told me that they had a time of their lives providing all of this hidden treasure. They did not expect that it would be found so soon, however. I put another question to them. Suppose this hidden treasure had never been found until the day the records came along. All that I received in the form of the answer was a sweet smile as they said, we took a chance. Here's a true story of what Mr. C's astral helpers found. So fasten your seatbelts and put cotton in your ear. Now this is deep, family. We really need to tap into this energy. Um, I've been subtly tapping into it, like with my dreams, as y'all know. But as the masses tap into it, as more of us tap into it, like aspen trees, we're all connected. Because believe it or not, we usually do the same things, have the same type of conversations in our own different ciphers. And, um, you know, we all acknowledge this when we speak to each other, you know. So if we were more advanced as a whole, then it would strengthen everybody. So that's why I'm reading this. Um, so here's a true story of Mr. C's astral helper is found. So fasten your seatbelts and put the cotton in your ears and get into a meditative state. After Mr. C had toured the way home and returned to the living room, he produced a blindfold from his pocket, sat down in a comfortable chair and asked Mr. Strong to close the curtains. Mr. C told Mr. Strong that he could ne either Stay during this meditation and reveal and revelation period or return in 30 minutes. Mr. Strong, of course, resulted to stay. Both men got quiet and Mr. C put on his blindfold and started the meditation process, clothed, going in and relaxing, breathing deeply, and then repelling, repeating the Lord's Prayer. That was the way he did it. He then called on his astral helpers through thoughts in his mind and presented the problem in detail. Continuing his deep breathing... Because we all know that the Africans, the melanated, the melanated Moors, hold the secret to the breath. That's why our nose, nostrils are so large. Um, so he w continued to do his deep breathing. Mr. C now concentrated on his favorite flower as he repeated to himself, higher vibrations, oneness with God. Higher vibrations, oneness with God. Higher vibrations. Oneness with God. Higher vibrations. Oneness with God. Higher vibrations. Oneness with God. He kept his concentration in a oneness with God technique going for some time. He knew that when his astral helpers had the answer, his vibrations would be high enough so that he could hear their voices or pick up their thoughts. He wanted his vibrations to be as high as possible, for his helpers might also project pictures into his mind to help him understand the solution to the problems more clearly. After about 20 minutes of his meditation, Mr. C heard one of the astral helpers say, your friend is sound asleep, but no matter. Which that's so true, because a lot of times when you go into meditation, you go to sleep. Um, Mr. C then saw clearly in his mind a vivid picture of the stairway to the second floor. He was told that the answer to the problem would be found under the carpet in a pad of each step and raised for the step, 18 steps, in the stairway. He was told to ask Mr. Strong for a carpet tack remover, a very sharp paper hanger's knife. Other tools will also be needed, but later on. Mr. C thanked the astral helpers, concluded the meditation with a prayer of thanks, and then woke up Mr. Strong. He would need a carpet tack remover and a sharpened knife to start with. He may need other tools later on that Mr. C could get him. The three sisters had every imaginable tool. As I looked at these recently, I wondered what they used them all for. I sense that I am about to find out, said Mr. Strong. Indeed you are. Let's go up to the top step. And Mr. C returned with his tools. As they slowly ascended the stairways, Mr. C called attention to the fact that on the sides of the steps and raised the rugs have been very carefully tacked down. Whoever put the stair pads and rugs down used many more tacks than they usually would. Hidden treasure sees the light of day. Mr. C remained 
and removed the tacks from the rugs and the pads on the top steps and rise. He lifted up the rug and pad to find five plastic envelopes, each containing a $100 bill. He pulled down the pad to reveal the steps rise. Another larger plastic envelope came into view. In this envelope was a parchment paper that looked yellow with age. He unfolded it to reveal the startling eyes of both a treasure map. Now, okay, I just got an idea. <laughs> okay, so a lot of us are working nine to fives and our children are spiritual and awaken. The third eyes are open, but yet they're going to school and they're being um, discouraged because um, our enlightenment is discouraged in this in this culture. That's why we're still unraveling the truth about our ancestry. So if you needed 20 minutes a day, which would give most people eight hours, 12 hours to work, 18 hours in some cases where people are working overtime. But if you give yourself 20 minutes, you can reveal ideas that will change your life. That's deep. And you only got to do it for two weeks. That's deep. Why don't we do it? So let's start. This authentic looking treasure map gave complete directions for finding the hidden treasures. We were to turn right so many feet and then left through a door and straight across the room to a wall. Then up the wall four feet with a sharp knife. The map indicated that we should cut away a rectangular three by five feet. I'm cutting. Mr. C cut away the heavy wallpaper. Those three sisters had removed their plaster and built shelves between two by fours. On these shelves were small, carefully wrapped antiques. Attached to each antique was a complete record of the item, date, and place, and brought prices and complete history of similar items. You hear how they finding your ancestors' ancient stuff? Mm. These two men had to stop, go find chairs, and sit down. The thoughts raced through their minds. Words tumbled out of their mouths, and their first reaction was to run and tell everyone about the great discovery. They quickly discarded that thought. That's deep, because we do be having that thought. That would not be wise to publicize the find at this point. Finally, after their minds slowed down a little and without unwrapping any more of the packages, they returned to the stairways and removed the carpet pad for the next step and rise. There they found 10 plastic envelopes, each with a $100 bill. On the rise was another beautifully executed treasure map, leading them to another location and more surprises as they cut away the heavy wallpaper. Again, these treasure hunters found it necessary to sit down in order to let their minds just quiet down. Then Mr. C observed that there were 18 steps. If the amount of money increased with each step and the number of values of antiques to be found by means of the treasure maps, how much could it all add up to? Let's see what the bottom step had to offer, said Mr. Strong as he held the guard rail firmly while descending their stairway. So they removed the rug and the pad on the first step from the first floor. Nine plastic envelopes were found, each containing a $1,000 bill from the rise that pulled out the 18 treasure maps. This map led the men to the master bedroom. It pointed directly to a large wardrobe. The instructions said to push the wardrobe to one side and remove the wallpaper over a door. The cover of the door had been marked by red dots on the wallpaper. Of course, the doorknob had been removed. Such a fine job had been done that no one would suspect that a large dressing room was behind that door. We're checking out. Thank you. In this dressing room were all the original paintings and the larger and more valuable antiques. They were all carefully wrapped to seal out dust and dampness. All had completely in, been information about the articles, the history, the value, the interesting stories not generally known by the public. Some of May remember that most houses built before the turn of the century did not have walk-in closets or any places to store clothes. They used wardrobes. The Wade Master Bedroom did have a walk-in closet and a dressing room. This last find caused Mr. Strong and Mr. C to come into the conclusion that they had had all the excitement that they could handle for one day. What should they do? 
Mr. C is announcing that there were $85,000 in bills on the stairway did not help any. Now, thoughts of fear were taken over. Why in the world did the women do this? Suppose the house had burned down. Mr. Strong suggested that they should first bring in an insurance man. They needed at least $100,000 worth of insurance at once. Mr. C did not tell Mr. Strong about the astral protection plan. We'll do that later. Mr. C excused himself and went into the bathroom. He immediately went into a meditation situation and asked the astral helpers to provide the astral protection plan for the Wade home. He then returned and convinced Mr. Strong that he had better call it in in, in, in a day. No need to call an insurance man or anyone else. Mr. C suggested that they both tell no one, get a good night's sleep, and meet at the Wade home that morning at 9. At that time, they could make plans and bring the proper people into the picture. The Wade home today is a symbol of historic hidden treasures. It is a long, wonderful story of how the Wade home of hidden treasures came into being. Mr. Strong first called a special meeting of the city council. Mr. C told them the beautiful story. He decided at once to set up a special board to handle the projects created by the revealing of thousands of dollars worth of hidden treasures. Today, as you enter the Wade home, you are handed a beautifully bound book, um, authentically described, all of the antiques and original paintings. This book contains the whole story of the findings of the treasures, including pictures of the 18 treasure maps, as well as the pictures of sections of the home where the treasures were hidden. Baby, where is, could you look it up on the internet where the Wade home is? W-A-D-E. The book was so well documented by English teachers, sisters, that it is demanded from antique dealers and art museums. She surely could not have left a more worthwhile legacy. As you tour the home, you can see where the treasures were hidden. A few have been left in the hidden places to give you an idea of how it was done. Even the special walls have been left as the three sisters built them. Many friends of the three sisters had tried to understand why those talented ladies did what they did. Did they long to find treasures somewhere? But these dreams never came true. I like to believe that they would, that they told, that what they told me. They had the time of their lives doing it. However, no one can say it was not an original idea. It surely lends excitement and romance to the happenings. No middle stories of activities of chivalric heroes or tales of extraordinary and mysterious events can top the true story of the three sisters as they traveled the world's highways seeking valuable items to be hidden in its ancestral home for others to find and enjoy after they have passed the spirit. Wow. That would be fun to do though. You know what I mean? You all rich and you ain't got to pay rent and you and your sisters living together and you just ain't got to worry about really nothing. So you like, dog, we getting old. What are we going to do with all this stuff we accumulated? Let's hide it around the house. You know what I mean? They already was carpenters. They already had the sciences down pack masonry. And that would be so fun to me. You know? Um, also, too, at this time, I just wanted to tell y'all that we are going to be having a conference September the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And it's going to be at the um, Norlana location. So um, go to our website underneath the calendar events in order to find out more information. It is going to be for the weekend, so it will be a $200 vibration, and that does include food, and you can also stay on the land in tents. And be inspired. Um, as y'all know, um, we give out a lot of valuable, applicable information. Um, so come out and join us. Sunken Treasures on the Great Lakes. I'm on page 154. There are at least 2,166 sunken ships in Michigan waters. Some are considered to be a great historic and financial value. For example, the Pubaic, the Pubaic was built in 1865 and was then the largest, most luxurious passenger ship on the Great Lakes. It sank with a load of copper from Michigan mines on Lake Coron near Alpena. Divers are now reported that property from sunken ships is not more than 40 feet of water is disappearing very rapidly. Often everything of value is taken. There are a few treasure hunters on the Great Lakes. 
The state of Michigan, as had the state of Florida, is passing legislation protecting these sunken treasures. The chairman of the House Conservation Committee is quoted as saying, Property from sunken ships is a great historic value. Anything taken from them should end up in the Michigan Museum and not on somebody's mantle or attic or in a museum in New York. However, if you bought up the copper from the pubic, I am sure that it could be sold at a profit for you. In most any library, you can find a number of books concerning ships that have gone down to a watery grave. While these books may motivate you to go after sunken treasures, you really do not need them. Your astro helpers will tell you where they are. If a dog can predict the future and locate a sunken ship, so can you. That's deep because they have had like articles where dogs were in hospitals and they would sit by the door of people who would pass that day. So the dogs had the feeling of who, you know, who was going to cross over. So that's deep. If a dog can do it. You know we can, but we're we're stagnated to food, clothing, and shelter, ABCs, one, two, three, purposely so that we'll just stay on the third dimensional realm, even though we are multidimensional. So our solution is to tap into our multi-dimensions of ourselves. At a port on Lake Ontario, a friend of Captain Bill Bryan of the ship Kamloops presented him with a ginger, an affectionate rust-colored puppy that was said to have the dis disposition of a happy Irishman. Ginger loved life and he loved being on the freighter and quickly adjusted to being on shipboard. He became the ship's mascot. However, Ginger was always with the captain as he carried on the ship's business on the board on the, in the port. He slept under the captain's bunk at night and she always shared the watch in the pilot house. The Kemp Loops were scheduled to leave for Fort Williams on December the 1st, 1927 with a load of wire and machinery for the Thunder Bay Paper Company. Before leaving Courtright, Ontario, the captain, with Ginger on his side, went ashore to see old friends. When Ginger and the captain returned at midnight, Ginger refused to go aboard the Kemp Loops. She outwitted all attempts to catch her. This went on for an hour until the captain could not hold up the departure any longer. It was the first pipe house watch that Ginger had missed in two years. Friends called out as they would look after Ginger. To make a long story short, the Camp Loose was lost, was last seen, and um, and uh, battled a violent shore near Island Royals on Lake Superior. After the storm, several ships, including the Coast Guard Cutter, searched for the Camp Loose, so it was never found. The following spring, the friends of Captain Bryan put Ginger aboard another freight bound for Fort Williams. While Ginger made it plain that she missed Captain Bryan, she seemed to enjoy the trip as she did in the old days. However, when they came to Riwina, Point Ginger ran under a bunk, and she huddled and shivered. She started to whine as if trying to tell all around that she knew what Kim Loops was. Many would agree that God had given this dog a wonderful but mysterious talent. However, if someone had told Captain Brian that his dog's actions indicated that he should stay in the port, would he have done so? We have to be listening to the signs and the symbols that are around us. You know, I wonder what signs and symbols the brother had who, um, who got killed in Walmart and his wife who would not take the money and she was going to sue who died also um that new year's eve we have got to listen to the signs and symbols that are around us a lot of times we don't listen to them and then something happens in order for us to start listening to them in order for us to become more and more multi-dimensional naturally because you can also use mushrooms um and other vices um However, they all have um, adverse effects on your body when you get older, if abused. So why not just do it naturally so you can tap into it constantly? So, you know what I mean? It's like the elder. He went in the bathroom like, mm, what should I do? You know, went into meditation and found out. So I think that's better to have the gift with you constantly than needing an outside substance, you know, in order to tap in. Um, but to each their own. To make a long story short, the Camp Loops were last seen battling a violent storm. 
and the following spring, the the friends of many would agree that God had given this dog a wonderful gift. Edgar Casey, the famous psychics, was walking into the post office at a Virginia beach one day. Several girls came out of the post office. He stopped them and advised them not to make the trip that they had planned. Although Casey had never seen these girls before, he predicted a tragedy in which all would be killed. One girl did not go. The other three went and all were killed. Edgar Casey was a Pisces and he was in Virginia. We actually went to the Edgar Casey Museum, which is preserved in um in Virginia. Saving treasures from becoming lost, buried, or sunken. Captain Charles Moore saved many a ships from going down to a watery gate grave. His own ship was was called the William Nelson. On the particular occasion that I'm about to relate, he was carrying a load of sand down Lake Michigan to South Chicago. As he passed through the Strait of Mackinac, bad weather developed. His first reaction was to head for a port and wait out the storm that he had knew would be a bad one. However, he heard himself ordering the course of the William Nelson altered dramatically. He ordered his men to take the ship down the east shore of the Lake Michigan through the dreaded Monotook Passage. The sea, um, building up the whole width of the Lake Michigan, began to punish the William Nelson unmercifully. She rolled, smothered with white water, and the galley dishes left their racks. In the fire hold, the men were hard put to keep their feeding. And as their footing slipped, the crew would not understand why Captain Mahor changed their course. It didn't make sense to them. At three o'clock the next day, William Nelson came upon our sun ship, its distressed flag snapped taut in the howling wind. The crew had given up and were simply waiting for the end to come. All of this really did not surprise Captain Moore, for he had been a hero many times before. Through his psychic powers, he seemed destined to be in the right place at the right time. He saved two men, two women, and three children from um, um, sinking yacht in Georgian Bay. He saved three men on a disabled yacht in Lake Erie. He had also rescued the crew of the yacht Mildred in Lake Erie's snowstorm. He rescued four men and two women after the yacht capsized on Lake Erie near Kelly's Island. As a result of all this, Captain Mahor's fearless actions in rescuing so many people, he was given a Congressional Medal of Honor for what was termed one of the most daring pieces of seamanship in the history of navigation. The medal was awarded to him by the U.S. Department of Treasury by authorization of Congress, who represented this Captain Mahor with suitable ceremonies in the club rooms in the International Shipmasters Association in Cleveland. It was so many details. How can that be a lie? It was also only such medal ever awarded to Great Lakes Shipmaster. Captain Mahor never really understood his psychic powers, but you can. In all probability, someone from the astral world alerted Captain Mohur to his need to save a ship and his crew and rescue those who had been shipwrecked. He literally kept human and physical treasures from becoming sinking treasures. Which, that's deep. Someone from the astral world alerted him. That's deep. Because a lot of us get these feelings, but do we listen to them? You can guide yourself or others to sunken and buried treasures. It is not at all uncommon today to read about treasure hunters following the directions of psychics, reclaiming sunken gold and silver from 300-year-old watery graves. How would you like to find an 8-foot gold chain valued at $200,000 or ingots of gold and silver diamonds and other jewels? I'd love that. <laughs> Shoot, how about y'all? Yep, and I sure would um use it to build because we need to build. As a people, as conscious people, we need to be building. Um, while the coast of Florida seems the most popular place to go treasure hunting at the moment, treasures on hidden treasures can be anywhere. As Captain Mahor knew where he was needed to save lives and ships, so you can find out where you are needed as well as discover many kinds of treasures and objects of historical value, which are now out of sight. Mother Bacon comes to visit March the 19th, 1974, three years for my birthday. Three years and three days. There was a Memorial Day for us. 
My grandmother Bacon announced that she would look to visit us at our home. Many of our astral friends heard about this and came at our regular evening meditation times. So they were scheduling this stuff like they were scheduling watching TV or scheduling going to work. So at their scheduling meditation time, trying to picture our living room for this occasion. Also presented becomes Mother Bacon's with Phyllis Bacon, Mommy Bacon, Norma Jean Baker, Kathleen Belgler, Benjamin Harrison, Virginia Jagger, um, Mary Jo Copening, Seward. Okay, all of these people was there because they still going on and on. My wife's grandparents and several others whom we could not identify. Mother Bacon had a message for our readers. May God go with you. I am standing here beside my grandson. My granddaughter had been playing the organ. She plays it so beautifully. It seems good to remember an earth home for a little while. You're now reading about hidden treasures. I know that you have found it very fascinating. Um, over a hundred years ago on our farm in Pennsylvania, I remember dreaming about finding hidden treasures. All we ever found were Indian arrowheads and a few other artifacts, but they were hidden treasures that meant a great deal to us. Now, of course, all this is nothing in comparison to what you have been reading about in this chapter. I was about ready to return to God when I became interested in the magic formula that was developed by my grandson. So I turned my thoughts again to earth that I might help. I had fully intended to return to God and become a part of that all-powerful God force. I had lost practically all human body characteristics, but after I became interested in the works of my grandson, I reversed his condition, so now I'm standing beside my grandson with my body fully returned. I will stay with this project until this wonderful ship helping yourself with astral powers is launched and the earth's lives of tens of thousands are made more prosperous, healthy, and happy. I know that's right. And earth is launched and um, people's lives of tens of thousands are made by millions are made prosperous, healthy, and happy. I often wondered if I, if while living in our farm in Pennsylvania would have read my grandson's book, if it had existed and would have believed it to be true. I like to think that I would have believed every word of it, for I now know that it is true. While I wish you, the readers of this book, good fortune in finding hidden treasures, increasing your material benefits, and making the most of all that Earth offers, I want to call your attention to another type of hidden treasure that the magic formula could open up for you. You know that you have returned to the earth's plane many times. You have had thousands of experiences and you have learned many lessons. And when you come back to earth this time, all of these experiences and lessons were hidden treasures within you. The magic formula will help you locate these hidden treasures so that you can really live in all dimensions of the universe. I want you to find that hidden treasure deep inside you. And your innermost self is the most wonderful treasure of all. God. That's deep. Wow. I noticed that my grandson calls his spirit friends and most of them are here tonight. Astral helpers that not that name will, will chosen. The astral helpers, that name was well chosen. I like the name actually ancestral helpers, but okay. They are astral helpers, just helpers. The great power to release these hidden treasures, to live life to the fullest, is within all of us. All we can do is help, but that help may be the ounce that tips the scales towards a prosperous and successful life. And we need all the help we can get. We just have to be open to it, and we also have to apply the help that's given. Because what good is the idea if you ain't going to act on it? I hope that hundreds and thousands of you will form as a wonderful a group of astral helpers as they have and as this commands. And may God and goddess bless you. Now, real quick, because we got to go. Um, I want to read this affirmation together. So if you have not been reading your affirmation or if you have not been reading your book, then do so. Because we want to see this change. So read it along with us. Okay, and remember, you have to picture the images as well as the words. Continuing now in days and years to come. Continuing now for days and years to come. Continuing now for days and years to come. I'm moving towards my cherished goals. I'm moving towards my cherished goals. 
My life is becoming rich with happiness. My life is becoming rich with happiness. A better economic condition and full contentment. A better economic condition and full contentment. Every action, enterprise, or endeavor. Every action, enterprise, or endeavor. In which I wish to be involved. In which I wish to be involved. Is bringing increased rewards. Is bringing increased rewards. Life is making its joys and happiness easier to come by. Life is making its joys and happiness easier to come by. Good fortune is coming my way more and more frequently. Good fortune is coming my way more and more frequently. I'm learning how to share my good fortune by helping others along the way. I'm learning how to share my good fortune by helping others along the way. I am truly moving closer to a oneness with God and Goddess. I am truly moving closer to oneness with God and Goddess. And a full release of my inner self. And full release of my inner higher self. I say family. Okay. Also, ever since we've been reading this book, this book has gone up to $120, $140. I also seen it for $340 and I also seen it for $899. And that's deep because everybody knows that this is our solution. This is what we have been stagnated from, which is our multiple aspects of ourselves. So if you don't do anything but read chapter 29, that paragraph, then do so. Um, I'm going to take a picture of it real quick so you can take a picture of it with your phone and so you and your children can be reading it together. But here it is right here. Right here. Now you'll probably have to take a picture and then flip it over in um, PowerPoint because Macs make it backwards. But okay. Peace and love. Until next time.